Welcome back everyone to another Hot Toys review and today we're going to be reviewing my favorite Hot Toys figure in my collection so far. The Hot Toys Heath Ledger Joker from the Dark Knight quarter scale figure, meaning this is another massive figure in my collection. You know, much bigger than the six scale figures that Hot Toys usually releases. You never really know which quarter scale character Hot Toys is going to do next, but you can kind of predict which one they're not going to do, the least popular ones. But Heath Ledger's Joker is one of the most popular DC characters, hands down. Everyone still loves him to this day, including myself. I think Heath Ledger gave one of the best performances I've ever seen, to be honest. Um, so here's a first look at the box. Like I said, I love how the boxes for the quarter scale figures from Hot Toys are, have the 3D effects. You have the 3D quarter scale logo and then the 3D head design, which is looks like a photo of the figure itself. You have a lot of skin texture and nice detail work on here. And then you turn on the side, and you have the Joker logo here. Looks like it's written by him. You have ha ha ha. And then you have more details on the back of the box. And so what you do to open up this figure is you pop this part out right here, and then you slide this inner box out. And here you have a first look at the inner box. You have some artwork on the inside, some Joker cards. Looks like it's pretty much close to scale. You have some more handwriting that says, do you want to know why I use a knife? Guns are too quick, the famous line from the movie. Um, you have ha 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 written on there. So let's take a closer look at that. You got some nice grimy effects. You have the Joker knife right here. So yeah, really nice detail all around. And here's our first look at the Joker figure in the box. So as you can see, it comes with quite a few hands. And not only that, but if you look underneath, there is a ton of accessories underneath the figure. Which we'll take a look at next. And here's our first look at the figure outside the box. Let's check out all those accessories. This figure comes with a ton of accessories and I love it. So let's check out the weapons first. So starting off with the pistol, you have a nice metallic shine to this, uh, to this automatic machine gun pistol. I'm just making up names here. I don't know specific weapon names, so just bear with me. You have a lot of nice details on this. Looks like real gun metal. It's got that metallic shine to it and details as you would expect. And yes, it is spring loaded and does cock back. You have to hold it back in place and you can actually see the bullet in the chamber, which is really cool. And of course the clip comes out and they have a painted bullet on the inside. No, it's not spring loaded, but it does look really awesome. So then you just put the clip back in like so. And you also have a revolver. So as you can see, the hammer of the revolver can actually cock back and forward. The trigger doesn't move, it's sculpted. But the chamber does turn, which is awesome. I love that. Not only that, but the chamber also pops out and you have painted bullets on the inside. Which is a really nice amount of detail on there, on both sides. And you can actually take this out. Like so. You have a nice wooden-like texture on the grip. And then you can just pop this back on there and then back in place. But as you can see, you have a lot of details on all sides. And of course you have the famous knife, which or switchblade I should say. Now it actually doesn't function as a switchblade, which I'm kind of shocked. It folds in like this. I don't know why they changed that. Um, it's really kind of surprising because the six scale version, you could slide it in and out. So I don't see why they couldn't do that for this one, but either way, it has a really sharp feel to it. Um, it has a nice metallic look. Looks like it's really made of metal, even though it's not. It's just plastic, but you also have a nice grip detail, which is awesome. But yeah, I like how it's a functional blade. And then you also have the shotgun, which you would think would just be a sculpted piece, but no. 
This is also functional, so you can actually cock it back, and this part cocks back with it, which is a really nice touch. There's no bullets or anything on the inside, but it does look really cool, and it has that nice wooden look to it on the grip. And that's about all the functionality for this one. But as you can see, you have details on all sides. And then you have the machine gun, um, which has a lot of different functionality. So for one, you can push this back for support on the shoulder. It's kind of flimsy and the trigger doesn't work, but the clip does come out and it has a painted bullet on the inside as you expect. And then you just pop that back in there. And what's really cool is you can also cock back this one as well. It's spring loaded, so it won't stay back, but it's a pretty loose spring, so it's not too hard. There's no painted bullet on the end. Well, you actually you can kind of see it in the clip, but it's hard to tell. But what's really cool is this part also comes back too, just like a real gun would work. And then you have two handlebar things for where the straps would go. And you have the sights as well. So it's all pretty accurate to how it would be in real life. You have some nice, subtle, very subtle weathering on this to kind of give it that gun metal texture. So that's a really nice touch. And you have details on all sides. And then you also have the famous pencil weapon that he uses when he does the magic trick. So you got some nice details on there. There's no painted number two on there surprisingly, but you have the eraser and then the metal part that connects the eraser to the pencil. And it looks, and it looks fairly realistic. It doesn't actually write, but it looks real. And then you have the detonator. I'm really surprised they didn't make it to where you could turn the key. Uh, this metal ring is actually made of real metal. The rest of it is sculpted and painted plastic. Even the wires are sculpted. Or actually, no, I think they might be real wires glued on there with leather, pleathery material. That kind of some of, some of it's supposed to look like duct tape, as you can see here. But you have nice circuitry detail, which looks really good. Intricate paintwork for how small this is. So I'm really impressed by that. And you have details on all sides. And then you also have the less important accessories. So you have two extra hand joints, which I have not used because I haven't needed to. And you have extra buttons that you can glue on if the other buttons come off. You have some extra small safety pins, which I'm not entirely sure what you could use those for. I guess you could use them to pin the coat back, you could use them to put the grenades on and stuff like that. But also you have the cool blades that he had in his shoes. So these are actually made of real metal. You get two of them that you can stick inside either of his shoes or both of his shoes, however you like. Um, but yeah, those are made of real metal and they're actually pretty sharp. And in terms of other weapons, you get the pipe, the metal. It's such a random accessory to include, but I love how they did. And it's just basically an old rusty, rustic pipe that the Joker picked up to beat Batman up with near the end of the movie. Not really much to it. It's kind of bendable, but not really. And that's about it. And then you have the last weapon, which is the grenades. And the famous scene where he was threatening to blow up the mob uh, to his, so he could escape. So you have strings attached to each of these rings on the grenades. The rings don't come out or anything. They're not functional. They're just sculpted pieces here and all the different styles of grenades just like in the movie. And so you have the string and then you have a metal ring at the end of it that you can place on his finger as if he's about to pull all the strings at once. You also get the famous Joker mask, which is a really nice bonus that they included. Yeah, it's just a nice extra piece. 
If the instructions actually say not to put it on the head sculpt because it could damage the paint, which is probably true if you're not careful. Although I've placed it on the head a few times and it doesn't really do much damage as long as you're careful because it's a nice soft rubber material, especially on the inside. We have a lot of nice texture, dirt, and grime details on this mask. And it looks nice. And even if you do put it on the head sculpt, it doesn't look very natural at all because the ears stick out like that. So it doesn't look very good anyways. So it's just something you could have them holding or off to the side. And you also get tons of stacks of money here. I thought they were going to be $100 bills, but no, they're actually just uh, $1 bills. And what's really cool is print, they're all individual for one, and they're all printed on each side. But what's really cool, as you can see, I took, took one of them apart, and there's actually a Joker face painted on each of the bills, on every single one of them. So that's really cool. And if you look carefully on the bottom, it says, Why So Serious, where it should say something else. So that's a nice touch. Uh, but yeah, that's really cool how they did that. I think it would have been cool to include maybe some $100 bills. Although I guess it kind of is goes in line with the Joker's message that he doesn't care about money. So I guess it makes sense. And uh, then, of course, you get a ton of Joker cards here. So you get basically the same two sets of cards. One is in color and the other is in black and white. So just going real quickly through these cards here. And then you also have the different hands. What's really cool with this figure is it comes with ungloved hands. And at this scale, you can get a lot of really cool skin texture and vein work on here. As you can see, it looks very uh, realistic. So these two are just basically relaxed hands. The amount of skin texture, veins, and details on these hands, even the fingernails and wrinkles of the fingers and the palms blows my mind. It's amazing how they're able to do that at this scale. And then you have two ungloved pointing hands. You have two jazz hands that are gloved. You have a material that, and texture that they used for these hand sculpts that makes them look like they're basically like rubber gloves that he was wearing in the movie. Is it perfect? No, I say this part looks kind of fake. But I mean, from a distance and when you have it posed right in the lighting right, it looks pretty good to me. This hand right here. Some of these hands I'm not even sure how to classify. This almost looks like it could be holding something. Um, like maybe a gun or something or one of the weapons and he's being you know dramatic with it just like he would be as you'd expect you have a gloved pointing hand so it's kind of comedic kind of like the gun pointing hand or something like that you have um another style of hand for the other side of just kind of a dramatic gesture of some sort that you could just play around with and see whatever you want to do with it what looks like the maybe a card holding hand or something like that. Well, maybe not a card holding hand. You could put uh, several cards in there and have them hold it. But actually, I believe this is for the pencil. Well, no, maybe it's not for the pencil. But uh, you could have them balance the pencil like this. Maybe. I don't know. This one, y'all tell me. I'm not really sure. I'd have to play around with it more. It's been a while since I've messed with this figure. 
Well, yeah, I'm sure you could find some use for this hand. And then you also have uh, the gun holding hand. So you would just take like the revolver, for example, and place it in like so. And these hands do have somewhat flexible fingers, by the way, so it's not too difficult to put the weapons in, which is nice. And then you have what I believe is the card holding hand. So you could just take, I usually take two cards to give it more strength so it doesn't fall out as easily. I place the cards like so, and you can have them saying, here's my card, and there you go. Suppose you could also experiment and have them holding the pencil like this. And then lastly, you have this hand right here, which I'm not really sure. I, actually, yeah, I, this is for the knife, I remember now. So you could take the knife and place it in like so. In different ways and then you also lastly you have the stand which some people don't like because there's too much going on uh, for me I don't know take your leave I think it's a cool design you know I like the words and stuff like that I love the the metal nameplate with indentions and texturing on it uh, this is kind of cool you have the Joker smile here and the Batman logo with ha 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 on it you have a standard hook stand. But yeah, I mean, uh, I'm kind of with the camp that I'm not a huge fan of the stand either. I think it just looks kind of, uh, I guess I prefer more diorama realistic stands that look like an environment that the character would be in. This is more of like a comic book kind of, not that it's cheesy or anything, but it's like a, you know, it's not a real, it's just an, it's a stylistic stand. I guess I could put it like that. It's not really like, oh, this looks like he's in an environment. It's just like more, this is like a display piece. So I would actually probably prefer like maybe the interrogation room floor or a metal graded floor or something iconic from the movie, like a place that he was in. I would prefer something like that. So, and here's our first look at the figure in full form. Here's a quick look at the front and of the side. And look, the head came off. That's not a good sign. And of the back. So let's take a closer look, starting with the head sculpt. All right, so here's a first look at the head sculpt. And as you can see, you have a very good likeness to Heath Ledger's The Joker in The Dark Knight. You have a lot of nice skin texture and subtle details. The hair is very well sculpted and well painted. You have multi-layers, which is a slight rubbery material. So it's not all just one solid piece. It's multi-layered. This gives it a very realistic touch. It has a very 3D look to it, in other words. And just the skin texture on the side and with the paint and all that stuff is very well done. We have very subtle details around the eyes. The eyes themselves have a glossy look to them that make them look very real. And the scars have 3D effects on them and texturing. So yeah, I think it looks really good. Yeah, and the skin texture continues onto the neck as well. So you can tell that it looks like he's wearing makeup. So moving on down to the chest, you have a multi-layer approach. You have several different suits. You have the tie, which is a loose tie here. And you have this purple cloak which actually has magnets on it to make it stay in place on either side and then you have the gray suit jacket underneath which is finely tailored has functioning pockets right here and right here so these pockets actually do work and you have a nice uh, accurate color on the inside here and on both sides so on this side you have buttons which are sewn on. And then you have what looks like where the buttons would go in place on this side. And you have the green under vest, of course, with a collar and all that stuff, finally tailored. Again, the tailing work on this is incredible. It really blows my mind. Actually, this pocket is not functional, and this one is not. So the vest pockets do not actually work. You have plastic buttons here that actually snap into place, so you could actually 
take this vest off if you wanted to. And the tailing work continues. And you also have this button up shirt underneath the vest, which does have real buttons sewn on underneath and plastic buttons so you can actually undo this shirt as well. Underneath this button up shirt, there's actually a white uh, muscle shirt. So that's pretty cool. And so yeah, as you can see, the tailoring is very well done, especially where the grenades go. It's pretty accurate to the movie. You have different colored straps and stuff like that, pleather material. You have a piece of metal here. And so that's pretty well done. These um, pockets are also functional. Although I think these are bottomless pockets, so I'd be careful about putting stuff in there. And then you also have a pocket up top, which is not functional and just looks like it is. And yeah, just the tailoring on the suit overall is very well done. As you would expect. Yeah, you even have button slits right here. And then buttons on this side of the purple cloak or purple jacket. And same for the gray under jacket. You have buttons on there as well. Which is a nice touch. And continue downward. You have, um, you can barely see it, but you have suspenders underneath this. So that's pretty cool. You have the chain that he has, which I'm surprised they didn't put a watch on the other side. That was kind of disappointing. And then you have Velcro for the uh, pants here. There's no belt loops or anything like that, but you do have the stripe design that was in the movie. And what's really cool about the shoes is you actually have socks, of course, which are real functioning socks, but they're glued on, so I don't think you can really move them. And then you also have real shoe strings, which is awesome. So that's a really nice touch that they added. This is a fabric. It's not sculpted or anything like that. This is actually real fabric shoes here. There's no details. Well, there's a little bit of texture on the underside, but not much else but that. And you have socks on both sides. Yeah, I just love the amount of detail in here. All right, so moving on to articulation, starting with the head sculpt. You can move. So since the head is actually fixed to the neck, you can only move the neck attached to the body. And you can move it down about that far. You can move it back pretty far. It won't stay back. And it's a very loose, so you gotta have to kind of just work with it. At least mine is loose and it comes off easily. So when you mess around with the head, you can get different poses, yeah, but it does come out of the ball socket pretty easily. I usually like to just have them hunched over. Yeah, you can, you can get a fair amount of articulation. Not the greatest, but it's fair. Um, in terms of the stomach and chest, so it's ratcheted, so you can move them back pretty far, and you can move them forward pretty far as well, and you have a swivel effect. And you can turn his body pretty far too. So the shoulders are ratcheted, and you can move them forward. They're limited by the suit jacket, but you could probably get more articulation without it, and give them back about that far. And you can move them out about 90 degrees. The elbows, you can move those 90 degrees and back at a straight angle. In terms of the hips, you can move those. They are ratcheted joints and you can move them up about 90 degrees and back about a straight angle. Uh, the knees are also ratcheted joints. You can move them about that far inward and at a straight angle forward. The feet are not that articulated, but you can move them forward quite a bit, not back too much, and you can move them ever so slightly side to side. The hands themselves are what you'd expect. They're a smooth joint, and so you can move them at quite a, quite a bit of an angle, actually, surprisingly, more than usual for Hot Toys hands. And you can turn them 360, of course. And just to note, there is skin texture on the arms, which is nice. So you can go for the look when he doesn't have the suit jacket on when he's in the interrogation room. So to attach the blade into the shoe, you just take this blade like so. And you see that little slit right there. You pop the blade in. And it's a tight squeeze, but fits in quite nicely. And it's a little sharp, but yeah. And then you have the blade in the Joker's shoe, just like from the scene in the movie.
To attach the grenades in the jacket, you take the grenades like so, and you can place them in whichever way you want. You just slide the, each of these little straps on the inside of the jacket underneath the, uh, I guess, handle of the grenade. And you can do that for each individual grenade. And it's kind of tricky not to get them too tangled up. They all fit in quite nicely, like so. And then there you have it. You have the grenades in the jacket. And then you can have the other hand pulling the string as the Joker is threatening the mob. And it fits nicely over, just like so. So in terms of my overall thoughts about this figure, um, like I said in the beginning of the video, this is one of my favorite Hot Toys figures in my collection right now as it stands. I love this character. I think Heath Ledger gave one of the best performances of all time, and I don't think I'm exaggerating. I think a lot of people agree with me on that. You know, every minute he's on screen, you're captivated by his performance. And so I just had to get this figure. I mean, you're talking about a quarter scale Hot Toys figure. If there's any quarter scale Hot Toys figure to get, it's the Heath Ledger Joker from The Dark Knight. And not to mention The Dark Knight's one of my favorite movies. And the Joker is one of my favorite characters, specifically from The Dark Knight. So for me, I'm definitely biased on this. I mean, I have to say this. That's why I'm so drawn to this figure. The costume design, the way the face was painted, the way they designed all of that stuff to make it grounded in reality. I love that stuff. So naturally, this just is just on the top of my list. This might be one of my top two figures, I guess, next to Obi-Wan. In terms of the pauses of this figure itself, I think the head sculpt is spot on. I think it looks like Heath Ledger, um, the makeup effects, the fine skin texture detail, and just the intricacies of the makeup, especially around the eyes and the mouth. It's really, really well done. And the hair is very well painted. It's not just a flat effect. You have 3D effects with the paintwork and the multi-layering of the hair. So it's not just like one solid piece is slightly hollow in certain areas. So it gives it a very realistic effect even though it's not rooted here. The tailoring is definitely, definitely another positive. Um, it just blows me away that they have sewn on buttons, especially at this scale, you can get more details with that. Uh, the fine tailoring with functional pockets. You can remove each coat of the, off the figure and you can get whatever look you want from the movie. And I just love all the functionality of the suit, just the different suit jackets. And the fact that they had real shoelaces instead of sculpted, I think is even better. Real socks and all that stuff. And the amount of accessories this comes with is definitely a huge bonus. Uh, the fact that it comes with the grenades, all the different guns and weapons he used, even the pencil, and two sets of cards is very impressive. And the fact that they printed the Joker face on the uh, dollar bills was really awesome. And definitely, like I, I would say with many Hot Toys figures, I love how the weapons are functional. They're not just for show. They're not just sculpted pieces. They actually cock back, spring loaded, the clips come out, you have painted bullets on the inside, and sometimes the the hammer cocks back on certain weapons too. And even the knife is functional, you can move it and have the blade go in and out. So I think that's awesome. I just I love all that stuff. Those are huge bonuses for me. Definitely all positives. The fact that it comes with the extra Joker mask is really cool. I really can't think of anything else that they could have included other than the box that the uh, that the bomb detonator was in. That would have been pretty cool considering it came with a 1-6 scale version. It would be even cool if they came with the interrogation table, although no, that would be a huge uh, accessory for this scale, so I can see why they didn't do it. But think about it, that scale, you could even have the lamp on the interrogation table probably light up, and that would have been really cool. They probably could have included some more knives, because I know the 6 scale version did come with, like, I believe, three different knives. So that would have been cool just to have two extra knives in there. Um, like the potato peeler, for example, I just, I think that would have been really cool. So kind of transitioning into negatives here. I regret uh, not getting the version that came with an extra head sculpt. That would have been awesome. Although I wish, I would rather have it come with the extra head sculpt that the six scale version came with, the laughing face. I think that would be amazing at this scale. The amount of detail you can get on the inside of the mouth or the teeth and all that stuff would be really cool. I mean, it's the Joker. You got to have a laughing face in there. And another negative is, why didn't they do the rolling eyeballs? I mean, I know I've never really seen them do a rolling eyeballs in a quarter scale figure before, but I figure if you can do it in a six scale figure, it should be way easier to do in a four at a quarter scale figure. If they did in the six scale, why not do it in this one? You know, if this is the deluxe version, why not have rolling eyeballs? It'd be even better. But yeah, I really wish that it just came with a laughing head sculpt and it had rolling eyeballs. 
So those are two negatives for me. Other than the buttons are kind of fragile. Uh, the plastic ones where you can unbutton the vest, one of them broke on me. But that's kind of just, you know, for each individual person on how careful you are with it, give or take. Although it was kind of unfortunate that I had to glue back one of the magnets on the suit. So the glue can come off if you're not careful, probably because of the heat or something like that. In terms of any other negatives, the gloves don't look the most realistic uh, compared to the rest of the figure. And compared to other Hot Toys figures, they just have a plastic look to them. But I'm not really sure much you can really do about that. Um, I almost wish maybe there was a little bit more weathering on the jackets um, to give it that rugged look that he had in the movie. Dirty look since it's a gritty type of movie. Um, I also wish that there, there were some wires in the purple coat at least. Uh, that would make a lot of sense because it would give you more posability and more options with the coat. In terms of other negatives, the only one I can think of is probably the stand. I, I think I just would prefer a more realistic diorama style stand, an environment from the movie. Overall, I love this figure. It's definitely the top one in my collection just because I love the character so much and the actor who portrayed this character did one of the best performances. So yeah, um, let me know what you think in the comments below. I want to hear your opinion and until the next video.